The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place, all of you, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As they went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Genereset and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, and it's a pleasure to be with you again. Last Sunday, we heard of the poor story of John the Baptist and how he had lost his head. He had been willing to speak truth to power, and in some ways, Herod was fascinated by him, perhaps at least in part because John the Baptist was probably the only person who wasn't afraid of Herod. Even though he was imprisoned by Herod, he was willing to continue to speak the truth, even though it might mean his life. And we heard how, it, how Herod took his life under very unusual and terrible circumstances. Our gospel continues today as Jesus uh, gathers his disciples around him, and they have told him all that they have done. And he recommends to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. What good news that is. After you've done hard work, after you've expended a great deal of energy, it's a good idea to take a rest for a while. I happen to think that particular scripture should be placed in several other places in the New Testament. Because, you know... The disciples of Jesus were not only following him and doing his will, they were doing so under very adverse conditions. Perhaps it's still very hot where you live. Perhaps the humidity is quite high. Uh, the Holy Land isn't necessarily a tropical paradise. It gets pretty hot there and dusty and water is not always available. So this need to Go to a deserted place and rest for a while is really important. Please find opportunities to rest during the summer heat. Uh, don't overdo it. I know we are getting closer and closer to uh, thinking about perhaps a school year or perhaps the end of summer. But I think a time for rest and relaxation, a time for refreshments are very important. We hear there's a reason why his disciples need this. Many were coming to Jesus and going, and there was no leisure even to eat. Well, my golly gee willikers, if you don't have a chance to eat and rest, how can you do good ministry? I can tell you as a pastor, uh, I am generally able to rest and to enjoy a meal without being bothered, but people were so hungry for God's word and they were so hungry for healing that apparently it must have been very difficult for Jesus and his disciples to get a moment for themselves. And so we hear in today's gospel, they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Hooray for them, right? They now have a few hours to rest, you know, to, to talk about what has happened, perhaps um, to sleep, perhaps to pray. But that's not what happens, folks. In today's gospel, many saw where they were going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns, and they arrived ahead of the guys in the boat. Oh, my. And so Jesus and his disciples went ashore, and they see a great crowd. They've seen lots of great crowds. His ministry, Jesus' ministry, is full of great crowds. And in this case... 
Jesus is said to have compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Sadness and compassion. Where the people would like to be healed. They would like to follow in God's path. They would like to be God's favored people. But because of their sinfulness, because of their wickedness, because of their foolishness, because of their ignorance, they just are unable to do so. They're hungry for Jesus, so they follow him. And Jesus says of them, they are like sheep without a shepherd. And so he teaches them many things. When he has crossed over, he came to a land in Gennesaret, and, moors, and the boat is moored. And when they get out of the boat again, the people again recognize him. And rushed about in the whole region that he began to bring sick on mats or whatever they, wherever he, they heard he was. And wherever Jesus went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick out in the marketplace and begged him that he, they might even touch the fringe of his cloak. Perhaps you recall, not so long ago, we talked about this woman who had had a hemorrhage for 12 years, who said to herself, if I could just touch the cloak that our Lord is wearing, I will be healed in this case. People are not brave enough to touch our Lord, but certainly that they might touch the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. It sounds frantic. It sounds, it sounds too hard to believe all of the sick, all those who follow him, how frantic they are to see him, how they gather around him, how they bring their sick out in every opportunity. And I suppose the good news is that all those who they bring out, those who can touch certainly even his clothing, are healed. Again, what I get from the scriptures is hunger. This hunger for, for wholeness. This hunger for forgiveness. This hunger for, for leadership. This need to be loved. People are like sheep. They know they are unhappy, but they can't quite solve their own problems. And so they follow Jesus because, golly gee, I guess he might be our shepherd. He might lead us and he might save us. I think the world is full of hungry people. People who are hungry for, for God, but perhaps they don't understand it as such, you know? I think perhaps it was St. Augustine, and I know someone could probably prove me wrong if they check the details. I think it was St. Augustine who said that, in each of us is a God-shaped hole, and we are, we are uneasy until that hole is filled, something like that. I think that's true about the human nature. I think all of us are somewhat incomplete and somewhat, somewhat anxious and fearful until that God-shaped hole is filled with the one true God. I meet a lot of people, unfortunately, who are anxious and troubled. Some are angry and frustrated. Perhaps it's the economy. Perhaps it's their leadership. Perhaps it's their family. Perhaps some difficulty that they've run into. And while knowing Jesus Christ may not solve all of their problems at once, it certainly would make a significant difference in their lives. Jesus doesn't come to fill our every expectation and our every need. You will not become filthy rich if you follow Jesus, or maybe you will. If that's God's will, perhaps you will. But the truth is we really need a loving God in our life. We need a God who will, who will perhaps lead us, one who understands us, one who forgives us, uh, certainly one who will fill that hole in our life that nothing else will fill. Um, neither drugs, nor money, nor sex, nor fame, nor beauty. That one hole that only God can fill. My hope is as you hear today's gospel, you'll recognize your own hunger for Jesus Christ. And you'll also recognize that Christ is no further away than your very breath. God is there with you and for you. God loves you so very much. God has taken you from where you were to hopefully a better place, and if not necessarily a better place, then certainly a different place. And from there, where will God bring you? Well, it's not really clear, 
But having a shepherd seems like a much better idea than not having a shepherd. Having a savior seems to make more sense than doing everything by yourself. Being around someone who loves you so much he would give his life for you, and did, seems like a better, a better deal than mucking around yourself trying to solve all your own problems. If you don't know Jesus Christ, ask him to come into your life. Recognize your own foolishness and sinfulness and tell God that you've made a mess of things and you just want to, you just want to be loved. You just want to be cared for. You just want to be forgiven. You just want to be one of God's own flock, a lamb of his own flock, a sheep of his own fold, or as we say, a sinner of his own forgiving. May God bless you and strengthen you in faith. Know that many doors may be opening for you, even as some doors close. Many possibilities may lie just beyond today. Who can tell? But good things lie ahead for each and every one of us if we follow our Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.